وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد This is our second episode and in this episode inshallah ta'ala I want to speak about the topic Al-Amru min Makri Allah In our previous episode I spoke about combining between hope and fear and how important it is and I mentioned some verses in the Quran to support that Inshallah ta'ala in this today I'm going to speak about Al-Amru min Makri Allah is a kabira min kabairi dhunub to feel secure and safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his plan is a major sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, أَفَأَمِنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, do they find safety from the punishment of Allah? Do they find in themselves security? Do they feel in their hearts security from the punishment and the plans of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah then says, فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ The only people who feel secure and safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the destroyed people. They are the ones who are in a state of loss. They are the khasirun. That's not something we want to have. The quality of I'm at the attribute of feeling safe from the punishment and the plans and the plots of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَأَمِنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He emphasized and told us in the Quran that the people, the time when they are laughing and they are joking and they are enjoying themselves and the times when they are sleeping, is when the plan of Allah comes into play. The punishment of Allah for them comes about. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Allah says after that, أَفَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا بَيَأْتًا وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ أَوَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا ضُحًا وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ أَفَأَمِنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, Are the people of the village and the town, were they not able to come with the quality of Iman, this attribute, this characteristics of Iman, were they not able? And if they only came with this quality, and if only they came with Al-Imanu Billah, and they came with Taqwa, Allah says, لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah says we will open for them, and we would have opened for them the sky, rain would have come down, and then this rain will then be a means with the permission of Allah to uh, produce their fruits and vegetations. But what did they choose? Walakin kadhabu. Instead of coming with the characteristics of Al-Iman, instead of coming with At-Taqwa, they chose to do what? Walakin kadhabu. They disbelieved in Allah. Allah then says, فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Allah then says, we grabbed them because of that which they did. Allah did not punish them for anything other than their own actions. That's why they were punished. They were punished because they did this. They put this forward. And then Allah says in the Quran, أَفَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا بَيَأْتًا وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ Do they feel secure, the people of the village, the people of the town, do they feel secure? أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا That our punishment comes to them whilst they are sleeping. So the punishment of Allah comes to the people when they are least expecting it. 
And then Allah says, Awam amina ahlul qura an yatiyahum ba'suna duhan wa hum yalabun. Are they, do they feel safe from the plan and the punishment of Allah that could come to them at daytime whilst they are playing? And then Allah says, Afa aminu makra Allah, fala yamanu makra Allah illa al qawmul khasirun. There is nobody who feels safe from the plan and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that he is a khasir, a person who has truly lost the plot, a person who is truly deviated and corrupt. So this ayah benefits us that the time that the punishment of Allah will come is when we're least expecting it. So what we need to be is always on our toes. We should always be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should never put our guards down. The people... They think that one good comes their way and they've disobeyed Allah. So that good comes their way. So they start to think, and many of us think this, that this is a sign that Allah still loves me. And Allah says, La, wallahi, it isn't. Allah says about the disbelievers, Allah says, the ones who disbelieved in the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi ayatina. Allah says, سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah Taala will lengthen for them. They disobeyed Allah, Allah will give them something. سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah Taala will let them, He will let them have fun, enjoy themselves, get what they want, wealth, women, children, all of that Allah will give it to them subhanahu wa ta'ala. But guess what? When that comes their way, And they carry on their sins, and they carry on their sins, and they carry on their sins. Allah Taala will grab them at a time when they're least expecting it. Uqba ibn Amir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentioned that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا رَأَيْتَ اللَّهَ يُعْطِي الْعَبْدَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا عَلَى مَعَصِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ استدراج. The Messenger said, if you see that a person is given from the dunya, from the dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him from the dunya. And when Allah gives him the dunya, he gives it to him ala ma'asihi whilst he is sinning. Allah gives him the dunya. And what Allah gives him is ma'yuhibbu that which Allah loves. And Allah has given him, this person, what he loves. He's getting what he wanted. فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ istidraj. This is istidraj. istidraj. This is the meaning of istidraj. A person who's sinning. إِذَا رَأَيْتَ اللَّهَ يُعْطِي الْعَبْدَ A slave who is sinning. And Allah is giving him in the dunya. He's giving him in the dunya. عَلَى مَعَاصِيهِ Whilst he's sinning. Whilst he's upon his sins. Allah is giving this person مَا يُحِبُّ That which he loves. This you have to remember is istidraj. This is the concept of istidraj. That Allah is lengthening your punishment. Your punishment is coming soon. The messenger then recited the ayah. ثم تلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فلما نسوا ما ذكروا به فتحنا عليهم أبواب كل شيء حتى إذا فرحوا بما أوتوا أخذناهم بغتة فإذا هم مبلسون. The Prophet recited this ayah. Allah says فلما نسوا ما ذكروا به when they forget that which they were reminded on reminded of فتحنا عليهم أبواب كل شيء. Allah says we open all doors for them. حتى إذا فرحوا بما أوتوا so they became happy with what was given to them. Allah says, أَخَذْنَاهُمْ We grab them بَغْتَةً Suddenly فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ Ponder here. These people, they left off what Allah Taala said. They left off following the religion. They left off following their deen. They left off following the commandments of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They chose to ignore all of that. Allah is saying, فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ We opened all of the doors of good for them. حتى إذا فرحوا until they became happy and they enjoyed themselves in the good that was given the wealth Allah has given them money here it is right left center they're getting money from all directions they are having children their wife mashallah she's giving birth they're having kids 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 other people are struggling they're looking to have kids Allah is giving them kids subhanahu wa taala they're becoming happy with what what they've done Allah says أخذناهم بغتة Allah says we grab them subhanahu wa taala suddenly فإذا هم مبلسون the person is in a state of confusion what happened? And Imam Ahmad narrated this in his Musnad. Sheikh Nasir rahimahullah authenticated it in his Kitab al-Silsil al-Hadith al-Sahihah. He authenticated it 
in his silsila sahiha the question here is is why would the allah azza wa jalla give the disbelievers why would he give the criminals the dunya because the dunya doesn't mean anything to allah sahal ibn sa'ad as-sa'idi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he mentioned that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said law kanat ad-dunya ta'dilu 'inda allah janah ba'udha ma saqa kafiran minha sharbata ma sahal ibn sa'ad as-sa'idi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said law kanat ad-dunya if this world was equal ta'dilu 'inda allah janah ba'udha if it was equal to allah the wing of a mosquito allah would not have if the world was worth a wing of a mosquito and it's less than a wing of a mosquito to Allah. But if it reached the value of a wing of a mosquito, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would then not allow a disbeliever to have a cup of water from it. But because this world is lower than the wing of a mosquito to Allah, okay, then that's why Allah allowed the disbelievers to have what they want from it. Al Imam Tirmidhi narrated this hadith, and then he said, Hadithun Hasanun Sahih. Hasan al Basri, Imam. A great Imam in Islam, he said, "Man wasa Allahu alayhi, falam yara anhu yamkur bihi, fala raiya lahu." If a person, Allah opens for them all doors, Allah gives you everything, and then you don't see that as Allah Tabarak wa Taala planning against you, you don't see it like that. Fala raiya lahu, you have no idea. Then you don't have a clue. If Allah is opening all doors for you. And Allah wa Taala is making your life easy for you, and you are sinning, and you know you're sinning, and you don't then see that as a destruction coming your way. You don't see this as Allah wa Taala heading your way to destroy you. Then fala ra'ya lahu, you have no idea. You're not a person anyone should consult in. You you have no idea. You don't even know how things work. فتادة من دعامة السدوسي رحمه الله. He said بغت القوم أمر الله. A group of people, they've transgressed, they exceeded their limits in Allah's commands. سبحانه وتعالى وما أخذ الله قوما قط. Allah تبارك وتعالى He never ever grabbed a people and destroyed them. Okay, except in the state of what إلا عند سكرتهم وغرتهم ونعيمهم فلا تغتروا بالله. Allah grabbed them. At a time when they were playing, they were enjoying themselves, they were feasting, they were drunk, and they, that's the time Allah grabbed them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, فَلَا تَغْتَرُوا بِاللَّهِ Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived, brothers. إِنَّوْ لَا يَغْتَرُوا بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ The only people who get deceived are the transgressors and those who have exceeded their limits. Ibn Abi Hatim narrated that. Qatada is mentioning here, and he's pointing out, you are sinning. You are committing crimes. You're exceeding your limits. You're going against what Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are an evil slave of his. And wallahi, we all are falling under that. And then guess what? We still think that we're good. We still think we're pious. We still think we're noble. فَلَا تَغْتَرُّ بِاللَّهِ Don't be deceived. إِنَّهُ لَا يَغْتَرُّ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ The only people who are Ones who become deceived by all of this are those who are fasiqoon. They are the fusaq. Ismail ibn Rafi'in, he said, من الأمن من مكر الله إقامة العبد على الذنب يتمنى على الله المغفرة To know if a person is falling into الأمن من مكر الله is To know that you are falling into this 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 thing which is feeling safe from the punishment of Allah is إِقَامَةُ الْعَبْدِ عَلَى الدَّنْبِ يَتَمَنَّى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْمَغْفِرَةِ The person is consistent upon sinning and is continuous upon sinning but he's hoping for Allah from forgiveness. You're not stopping the sin. You're not leaving off the sin. With that said, you're still hoping from Allah forgiveness. So you've combined between sinning and hoping from Allah for forgiveness. That is a sign of Al-Amnu Min Makrillah. Hoping forgiveness from Allah should happen from you. Okay? It should happen and take place from you whilst you're leaving off the sin and you're abandoning the sin and you're hoping for Allah to forgive the ones that you've done in the past and those that are going to happen from you in the future. But you as a person are running away from the sins. You're striving, you're struggling to, lead, 
You're fighting against falling into these sins. No one is perfect, wallah. That statement is true. There's no one who's perfect. And I don't know anyone who's going to claim that they are perfect, that they're free from errors. They never fell short. We all are sinners. And every single day we're doing something wrong. We're saying something wrong. We're hurting someone close to us. That shadow of a doubt that's present. But we're consistent upon fighting and repenting and retracting and asking Allah for forgiveness and leaving off the sin. That's the struggle, brothers and sisters. That's what we're all meant to do. All of us. There's no one better, the greater like per se, the speaker here may not be in any way, shape or form, and that might be the haqiqah, and I believe it to be the truth, that the overwhelming majority of you might be, might be better, and greater, and you know, on, more honourable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The topics and these points are for all of us to reflect, self-reflection, consistently look over it. I promise you these topics I speak about and this one itself, al amnu min makri la. It doesn't apply to me first and foremost for myself. That I don't fall into this. That I don't become a person who's laxidaisical, relaxed. I feel safe from the punishment, punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These topics, they make me reflect and think and ponder. Every time your knowledge and your understanding of the religion increases, warabbil ka'ba, warabbil ka'ba, I swear by the Lord of the throne. And I'm going to stand in front of him one day and he's going to account me for what I say. Every time you learn and every time you acquire knowledge, Wallahi, your Iman increases. Sidqan it does. And your relationship with Allah becomes better. The more you study Allah, how merciful he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are sinning and he's still choosing to do istidraj for us. He's choosing to still let us go. In our eyes, if someone wrongs us, if someone does something evil to us, if something transgress, someone transgresses on our rights today, we want to take it from them straight away, one way or another. We want to hurt this person. We want them to feel it. That's what we do. We want them to, ah, we're going to hurt this person. We don't forgive. We don't forget. We keep it in our minds and our hearts and we wait for the moment to catch them. That's what we are, right? Allah is not. He let us still think over it. You're sinning. You're committing crimes and you're asking Allah, you're hoping for forgiveness simultaneously. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't. And it's giving you chance to think and say, you know what? It's, it's reached that point. I can't do this anymore. This person I'm hanging around with, he's having an evil effect on me. He's affecting my religion. He's affecting my relationship with the Quran, he's affecting my relationship with my parents, he's, reflect, he's, he's affecting my relationship with the Muslim community. I, from this moment, should walk away from this person and I should hope from Allah forgiveness for what I've done in the past. And always when you remember the past and what you did and it comes to your mind, you're consistently scared and you're frightened. You're worried. What are you going to say to Allah when he asks you about this particular thing? How is your response going to be? What are you going to say to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Al-Kaba'ir, the major sins are Ash-Shirku Billah, to associate partners with Allah, Wal-Ya'su min Rawhillah, it is to give, it, to give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, Wal-Qunut min Rahmatillah, same, it is also to give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wal-Amnu min Makrillah, and it is also to feel safe and secure from the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Al-Tabarani narrated it. And Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he authenticated it in his tafsir. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he authenticated it in his tafsir, rahimahullah ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Tarjuman Al-Quran, he said that the kaba'ir, the major sins, are al-shirk billah. It is to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is also to give up in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is to feel safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bazaar narrated that. Some scholars have narrated it marfu'an, lakinahu la yasihu marfu'an. It is mawquf, ala ibn Abbas. Some scholars have transmitted that statement of Ibn Abbas as the statement of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but it's not, it is not the statement of the Prophet 
rather the statement of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. The issue of al-amnu min makrillah, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a aqeedah related issue. ولذلك, if you go to the kitab, kitab al-tawheed by Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab rahimahullahu ta'ala, he mentions in there a chapter, a bab. And what does he say? He says, babun qawluhu ta'ala, the chapter, the chapter of the statement of Allah. أَفَأَمِنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ He brings that ayah as a chapter in his Kitaq Tawheed book, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. Because the people who come with this, this, this trait of feeling safe from the punishment of Allah are the disbelievers. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الطَّحَاوِيُ also mentioned it as an aqeedah related issue in his great book, Aqeedah uh, uh, the Aqeedah of Imam uh, Imam Al-Tahawi rahimahullah where he says وَالْأَمْنُ وَالْيَأْسُ يَنْقُولَانِ عَنْ مِلَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ Having the, this trait of feeling safe from the punishment of Allah and giving up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy both of them will take you out of the fold of Islam It means that it will lead you to disbelief Al-Amnu wal-Yas Feeling safe Feeling safe from the punishment of Allah and also uh, giving up on Allah wa Taala's mercy, both of those are going to be a means for you to walk away from the religion. I'm going to stop there, inshallah Taala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two-second action right now? that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel. Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't wanna miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.